Welcome to Green Ball Extra. Today we're heading across to Abu Dhabi where we've got Lorcan Tucker. Welcome, Lorcan. Hey, Craig. Thanks for having me. So it's been five months since the last international um, and probably four months since the Lightning finished their season. Must be a good feeling to get back in action. Yeah, it is. We spent a lot of time in the indoor hall this winter. I think just with the lockdown and the current situation meant that we had a long period of time not playing, I suppose. And I think that's a bit unusual. I really got used to being away a lot quite during the winter. Um, so, yeah, it is exciting to be out playing now, looking into a long series with, with lots of games. Um, so, yeah, I think everyone's just glad to be out of that ice box and, and into the sun, I suppose. How, how have you been preparing? So you've been spending time in uh, North County and um, has that been the, the bulk of the last four months? Yeah, we had a little bit of a break after the season. The season went on longer than, than usual because of COVID. So we didn't finish till generally the start of October. And then we had a couple of weeks off and then we were straight back in into the gym and, and into North County, which was great because it is nice to have a, a nice period to devote to something, maybe trying new things or, or drilling, drilling your basics. Um, but at the same time, it is nice to be out here with, with games to look forward to. And, and, and that is what it is, I suppose. Where you are now, you're in um, a bio bubble in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. um, a lot's been written about the effect of bio bubbles on players. What's, what's your experience of the bio bubble? You had some experience at Southampton in, earlier in the year, but um, have you coped with the uh, bio bubble life? Um, yeah, I quite enjoyed Southampton. I didn't find it too difficult. We had a hard start here. We had three days of, of pure isolation in the room. So as you can see me now, this is literally what I did for three days, which was tough. And there was hard periods of that. But I don't know, it seemed to kind of fly by and go by extremely slowly, both at the same time. Um, but the bio bubble in general, yeah, it probably give it a mix, with mixed reviews. Like there are good things. We spent a lot of time with the, the lads that are here, which is good. Um, probably one of the downsides, I suppose, is that when you're touring you get to experience a lot of great places and great cities and and all that that goes with it and i think the bio the bubble limits that a bit um so we don't get to go out to restaurants and see the tourist attractions and whatnot but then again i suppose everyone's doing the same thing and no one's really doing that in any of the countries in the world at the moment because of the situation but um but yeah no it, it's fine so before we get into uh, the series coming up, so you're a, pretty much a one club man with Pembroke um, <laughs> since a youngster. Um, going back, what my said a lifetime ago, about 18 months ago, under your brother as captain, you um, helped take out the first of Irish Senior Cup win. How was that with the feeling with Pembroke? Yeah, no, we still think about that and we talked about it over the, the dinner table at Christmas, actually, recently enough. Um, yeah, I think with Pembroke, it was, it was such a long process going from kind of a, an average club team in Dublin to going to win an All-Ireland. Um, I think that took, that was years in the making. And I'd say, well, one of the big things that why that happened for me was just the family orientation of the club and the commitment to, to all the players that were in the club. Mm. Um, so, yeah, even I, I still see it like nowadays with, with younger kids coming in and getting their parents involved. And because I know that's what happened to me that was how it, it all evolved, I suppose. And I think it's great to see that it's still happening and that hopefully we'll win more Senior Cup titles, I think, in the future. And actually, you spent some time with Trinity Career Club. So how was that? I loved playing for Trinity, yeah. And there was always a bit of, uh, well, not tension with Pembroke because of the, the clashing of the schedule, I suppose. I think that's been relieved over the years. So I had four great seasons with Trinity. I always say when anyone asks, when anyone asks me what my favourite club to play in, or place to play in Dublin or even in the world is always College Park. Yeah. I always thought there was nothing better than, than going down on a Saturday afternoon and in May and everyone studying away when you probably should have been studying as well, but <laughs> taking the break out for their lunch and watching the game. It was always such a nice atmosphere. And I think that's something that always stay with me. And I'd nearly love to go back and play for them again in the next couple of years, if, if it was possible. Now, just thinking about one more question with the club. You once scored 155 in a T20 match. Uh, do you remember that day? Yeah, I do. It was out in Balbriggan, I think. Yeah. I don't know if you, let's say, people know that Balbriggan is a pretty small ground. So that's probably one of the main factors for, for a high score like that. Um, but yeah, I guess it was just one of those days that, that everything kind of clicks. And looking back, it's hard to actually remember the innings 
itself because I think when you do get things right, well, I find myself, um, when you do get things right, it's hard to, to actually look back and remember it. I think because of the, you're nearly so focused that you don't have time to, to stop and think. I think well, that's one of the, the good things about good things like that. And then, and then everything that comes with it, I suppose. But yeah, no, it was great. Moving on to the uh, Interpro series. Obviously, you're a key part of the Leinster Lightning squad and um, another two trophies this year for the Lightning, a very dominant display. What, what makes the Lightning side so successful? Um, yeah, I do think that winning is a habit in a way. We found that with Pembroke, once you can start winning, you can nearly, you can nearly hold that for long periods of time. I think that's what the Lightning have done. I think it started back in, in 2013, I think when Trent Johnson was in charge and they were the dominant force then. And I think it hasn't really changed ever since. I think some of the other unions have, have definitely had great years uh, and won some of the competitions. But I think because we've had that winning habit since, we've ingrained it into the younger players coming in. Um, for me, the Lightning group is also a very close group of friends. Um, and I always try and appreciate that, I suppose, even when we're off the pitch, I think, we're always socialising together and I think everyone's pretty close-knit. Um, and the final thing I would say on, on the Leinster Lightning group, I think it's just the depth that's in that team. Yeah. No matter how bad things are going, there's always someone even batting low down the order or bowling late in the innings that will come up trumps nearly and, and, and do the job and get you over the line. I think that's a, a great thing to have in a team like that. Right. And you were once asked who your cricketing hero was when you are growing up and... Um... Possibly surprisingly, you mentioned Brett Lee. Yeah. So, yeah. Very beneath those wicket keeping gloves. Is there a wannabe pace ball or wannabe breakout there? Yeah, there, there was. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think back now. I'd say up until I was, I bowled at a reasonable level until, well, I thought it was a reasonable level until I was 15 or so. I think I bowled for the Irish under 15 team in, in our European Championships, whatever that was. Um, but yeah, there always was. I think I wouldn't be sure what would have happened. I think it was because in Pembroke, there wasn't many opportunities for seeing bowlers in the in the senior team. And there was for a wicketkeeper in, in the in the second team. And I just took that up. And I think that progressed. And because of that, that just obviously you can't bowl and keep at the same time, really, apart from in a kids match. So <laughs> I think the bowling just got pushed to one side. But yeah, no, Brett Lee was always my idol and I'd probably still hold to that. Nearly. I wasn't proud. Um, have you always been a keep keeping always been on the radar no it was well yeah when you're young I think and in those teams you want to do everything when you're under 11 12 all those age groups you want to bat ball keep field I think probably did a bit of it when I was young but then I'd say it only took took it up properly when I was about 15 um, like I said I was the second team in Pembroke didn't have a wick keeper and I kind of just said I would do it. I think it was guaranteed place in the team. That's why I wanted to do it mainly. Um, and then I suppose it just led into to other things, into the into the first team and then eventually into to Leinster, Leinster youth teams and the Irish 19s. I think after that, it was kind of, I'd got to a level where I was happy with, with where I was and to go with it from there. In fact, it's led on to 28 matches for Ireland at this stage. Yeah, it's um, funny how it works, isn't it? Your debut was in 2016 against Hong Kong Abridi, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel pretty comfortable now with the step up to international cricket? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. International cricket's a tough game. Um, and sometimes I think I doubt myself like whether whether I can do it, but I think that's all part of it. It's it's dealing with those emotions and, and practicing and practicing and practicing and getting yourself to a place where you're confident in what you're doing. I think after 28 games, I can say that it's it's all been great experience and that hopefully it'll stand to me in, in future ODIs, T20s, or hopefully a test match maybe someday. Now, moving on to where you are now, um, when you change from conditions like a Dublin to Abu Dhabi, you've been for, for batsmen and bowlers, such varying conditions mean a change of game plan. What about for keepers? Do you have to adjust your game to yeah, I think, different conditions? Well, every surface is different and I think well obviously naturally it spins a bit more out here so whereas it doesn't really at home I think that has a big effect on on what I practice at, at training each day 
um, and it probably lead into the games as well. So just you know, hammering away at those those basic skills, I think, are more important out here. When the surface is a bit better, you can kind of push them side nearly and just focus on, on the ball and your reflexes and stuff because it's very true. Um, well, the balance is true. I think out here, I think maybe you have to take a step back and just be be more refined in, in what you're doing. And I think that'll that'll hold you. And you're just back from a training session and that's today. I mean, how are conditions looking out there? Yeah, well, the weather's the exact same every day. It's pretty hot, like 30 degrees. It's dry. The Abu Dhabi grand staff take great care of the, of the outfield and stuff, though, was just very luscious, even though the weather out here is ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, it's great. We've had two long sessions now. I don't know what day today is. Friday today and Thursday yesterday after our three days isolation. So I think everyone's kind of getting into the groove of it now. And we're getting into a nice routine, I think. So we should have a couple more training days before our warm-up match on Monday, I think. Monday the 4th. And looking ahead to the UAE series and the Afghan series, I mean, what do we expect from both sides? And um, how do you rate Ireland's chances? Well, very highly. I think we're in good form. I think we had a very good year in 2020, despite the, the limited pictures. I think we had some great scalps against the West Indies in, in the T20s and then England. Um, and... Afghanistan in T20 in March and England in the summer in the ODI. Um, so I think everything's looking good for the team at the moment. The UAE beat us, I think, the last time we played them in the T20 qualifiers out here. So I think we'll definitely be looking to get one back and and win that series against them in those four games. And then Afghanistan, um, they're lucky, I suppose, to have players playing the BBL, um, which has given them good exposure and good game time. So I think we're going to try bridge that gap now with plenty of training and, and, and a series with the UAE beforehand. And a uh, final one today. Um, if you're able to draft a former Irish cricketer playing in their prime into the current squad, who would you choose and why? Um, who would I choose and why? Oh, I'd probably choose Ed Joyce. I think because I'm a purist at heart and I think Ed was such a powerhouse for at the top of the Irish batting order for so many years. I think, especially the way he makes look batting like an art form, I always thought it was so beautiful and so refined. So I think, I don't think you could complain with having him in any team. So I'd pick him. That'd be my choice. I think a lot of people would agree with you on that one. I think anyway, so. th thank you very much for joining us today, Logan, and uh, good luck with the tour ahead. That was um, great, great. And uh, farewell to everyone. Goodbye. That was all right? Absolutely perfect. One Good. take token. <laughs>